five minutes after the hour, President Biden getting a dire warning about the midterm elections from his own party. And Democrats are calling on the administration to change its messaging immediately or face a red wave in November. Alexandria Hoff joins us live at the White House. Alexandria. Well, good morning, guys. Yeah, by staying the course they are on, the administration is hanging fellow Democrats out to dry. That is according to Democratic strategist Michael Stratton, who told the Daily Mail, quote, Democrats need to, you know, wake up here, smell the coffee, and start to get ready. And there he's talking about the midterms, of course, where voters are considering things like the border crisis, wavering COVID policies, sky-high food and gas prices, historic inflation. Um, we have mortgage rates that just now hit 5%. But on these costs, the White House is sticking to this Putin's price hike branding. Take a listen. We understand some realities happening right now, including the fact that there is a war happening in Europe, and that is uh, dominating the airwaves, which we understand and fully expect. And so uh, the president has actually done a number of events on the economy in recent days and weeks um, and will continue to. But that hasn't moved the needle, at least not in the direction the president would like. According to the latest Quinnipiac University poll, just 33 percent of Americans approve of his performance. Here's former Clinton campaign advisor Mark Penn. These are spectacularly low numbers. Yeah. <clears throat> to really get down to a, only a third being favorable and in the 20s on independence, of course, makes re-election a virtual impossibility. The, 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 the administration has got to pivot or this is going to be a tornado of a midterms. Added stress to the holiday weekend, that's for certain. And the president is spending it at Camp David. Pete, Rachel, Brian. Wow. Uh, we'll see if the White House feels that five alarm fire that Mark Penn uh, talks about. Uh, thanks so much, Alexandra. When the only explanation you have is we're just not selling it well enough. Right. Like you're always at the bottom of the barrel. If only people knew how great we were. They just can't hear it through all the press other than Fox, which is still trying to prop them up. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we, we are talking about the politics of it, um, the midterms and all that stuff. But I think about the district that I lived in um, just a year ago, a working class district. People are in a lot of pain. Right. Uh, people seriously are, are not able to buy the amount of groceries they need to feed mm -hmm. themselves. Old people on fixed income struggling. People going, I can't put my kid in in a, in a, in a sport or a camp. camp this summer. Yeah. I can't even afford to put the gas in to drive him to the soccer games. This is happening around the country. And I just think that the administration is really just absolutely toned deaf to mm. this, absolutely insensitive. Right. Uh, there's a couple of things. Coming out of the pandemic, you could understand there might be supply chain problems. For the first time in 100 years, we stopped uh, doing anything. Remember, we, we stopped, everybody stopped their economy. And then uh, we haphazardly restarted it as a wave would hit this nation, Australia. Another wave would hit Canada. Another wave would hit China. Okay, I understand that. But there was no urgency to fix it. There was all urgency to sell it differently. And your transportation secretary takes three months paternity leave at the most That's inopportune time. And they didn't even tell us. And so there's, there's <laughs> inflation starts to rise. And you told us it would be temporary. And at the border, you just knew you didn't like Donald Trump's plan, but you had no plan. All those things you had uh, control over. Yeah. If inflation was going to go up, as the economists say coming out of this pandemic, did it have to go up to 8.5? I'm looking at the 1980s. It was up to 11. And then the, to, to try to get it down, they raised interest rates. So now interest rates were at 5%. Oops, I'm going to get my first time house. Don't think so. Or I was going to remortgage. Doesn't make sense anymore. That affects the banks. Mm -hmm. So the ripple effects. So you like to think that you might hear from Janet Yellen with the Fed experience as Treasury Secretary. You might think that you were going to hear a, a little bit more from the Transportation Secretary as we talk about the price of uh, jet fuel and why, why, it's so, uh, why it's not affordable to fly anymore. But you don't you see the president out making a speech and then disappearing. Shaking hands with the air. Did you see that I video see yesterday? That. That yeah. was very sad, actually. It was. I mean, right. there needs to be an intervention with this family. It's just really. I'm not. I'm not I, I say that <laughs> with uh, with full compassion. I thought that was really painful to watch. I, right. I felt bad for him. Right. Um, I feel bad for us. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I, 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 we're all <laughs> right. Thank uh, you. Thank ten, you, Brian. Yeah, ten, uh, <laughs> I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.